So Dave and I are back and we're going to show you the installation process for our shielded patch panel. So basically, uh, this is what's known as a management bar. And it comes folded like this, you unfold it. And what the purpose of this is, is it snaps onto the patch panel itself so that you can affix your cables coming into the patch panel and give them some strain relief. So it's a simple process. You simply hook it on one side, like so, and then repeat for the other side. And it snaps in, and it's ready to go. So cabling comes in this way, and then you can nylon tie or Velcro down as you see fit, and then your keystone will snap in here. And then also you may notice on the rear, we have our eight inch bond wire. This bond wire is meant to be affixed to a rack bus bar, a copper bus bar found in floor standing racks or telecommunications rooms that have a formal uh, bonding structure. Uh, to, to ground out your Ethernet cable shields. Now, uh, this 8-inch bond wire can be replaced with an accessory that we have called True Plug, and we'll get into that in a few moments. But uh, if you're bonding to your rack, uh, you'll affix the patch panel to your rack, and it's a 1U, it takes up one rack unit, so 1.75 inches high, 1 and 3 quarters inch. You'll need to use the screws of the hardware that came with your rack unit. So we're going to go ahead and screw this guy down. One thing that uh, I should probably stress before you go tightening down all these screws that are in your, your rack, these, especially with these wall racks, they tend to be a bit flimsy. So it, what can happen is if you go tightening in your router and your switch, you may not be able to tighten in your patch panel. Or if you tighten in your patch panel and your router, you may not be able to tighten in your switch because it's gotten too narrow. So it's always a good idea to put the, the screws in just to the point of almost tight, but not quite, so that it, you get some flexibility in breathing room. And then uh, that way you're not in a situation where you have to go unscrewing everything again. It's happened to me more than a few times. With the bond wire, normally, like I said, this it would usually have like a rack bus bar either here or perhaps on the side, and you would bond this to the rack copper bus bar. If your rack happens to be bonded to ground on its own, not with a, not with a bus bar, uh, you would then bond this wire here to your rack itself. You would need to scrape the paint off and apply some no-ox uh, compound, which enhances conductivity and, and reduces the possibility of corrosion. And then you would attach this directly to your uh, rack frame. Now, when we're talking about putting in cabling into this, as I said before, this is a multimedia AV panel. It's not just Ethernet keystones. So you can put shielded runs in here. You can put unshielded runs. You can put uh, AV keystones like coaxial, BNC, HDMI, any of that. The only caveat is no CAT6A unshielded runs that are going to be pushing 5 gigabit or faster because of the or alien crosstalk issue. But everything else, no problem really. So now we're going to demonstrate some runs that we've got coming in. And we've already pre-terminated these two shielded keystones and we're going to show you how they all snap in. Now while Dave is snapping in a few keystones, I'm going to explain what this is. If you are a professional installer, you already know what this is. This is called service slack or service loop. And the purpose of this is to provide enough slack for your individual installation so that if you need to move this rack around or you need to re-terminate cabling or something like that, you've got enough slack to work with. So you can un-Velcro, you can get a little slack out of it, re-terminate it, and go about your business. Because as everybody knows, the most expensive cable in the world on a per foot basis is the one that is one inch too short. So you don't want to be in that situation. Now, also you may wonder, why is it turned into this circle eight pattern? If this was unshielded Ethernet cable, you want to store it in a circle eight. That minimizes interference because you've got the cable laying back across itself and then in different directions, and that minimizes cable interference. It also minimizes the possibility 
of the cable picking up radio frequency interference. So if you're dealing with unshielded cable, you do not want to turn it into a circle. Now, if this, this is, happens to be shielded cable, so doing the figure eight was a little overkill. We could have actually gone with a circle in this case. Just for continuity purposes, we're going to keep it a circle, or our figure eight. And so Dave's got most of these uh, runs all snapped in. And before he puts in the last one, I want to stress, the shielded keystone, you've got two lumps of metal. These are these nubs here. This is basically your fulcrum point. And so that's going to grab onto a piece of metal at the rear of the, of the uh, patch panel, the silver piece of metal, and it's going to balance there. You're going to put it in at an angle from the rear, and it's going to grab onto that piece of metal, and you're going to use that to lever and then seat the keystone, and it's going to snap at the top. So now we've got our shielded runs. What's interesting, of course, is that you can also do unshielded keystones, no problem with unshielded cable, and AV keystones. I'm going to let uh, Dave demonstrate these guys. Well, this is a regular coaxial coupler that you use to attach two AV coax cables together. And if you need to do that at your new multimedia patch panel, they go in just the same way as an Ethernet keystone will. And we call these keystones too because the keystone standard has to do with fitment. The fact that these are keystone means that they will fit into a keystone patch panel. The second one is also AV. It's a uh, BNC connector, also for a coaxial cable. And what I thought would be interesting to show you is this is a blank insert. So if you're wondering what it is that's standard about like standard and high density style keystones, it has to do with this right here, literally just this. You've got the fulcrum point at the bottom, you've got the clip at the top, and this dimension across this way and this dimension vertically that is what is standard, and also the distance between the fulcrum and the clip at the top. So basically, when we're talking about standard and HD keystone, or keystone in general fitment, whether it's couplers for AV or Ethernet keystones, this is the part that's standard. The actual rear of the jack, that, if it's a slim, and it's not wide, if it's slimmer, that constitutes high density. If it gets bigger at, at the rear side of the keystone jack, then that is probably more in the standard category. But the rest of it, the design can be decided by the manufacturer. All right, so basically what you have here is a multimedia AV panel that's accepting shielded runs. And you got a couple of multimedia keystones, and they're not shielded, by the way. And then you also got spots for maybe some unshielded runs. As long as your patch panel is bonded to ground, all of this stuff is going to work great. And then at that point, all you have to do is take a patch cord and start plugging your stuff up. So let's uh, get a shielded patch cord there, Dave, mm -hmm. and plug it into a shielded keystone, and then just plug it into a switch. Now, this, is, this particular patch cord is a little overkill, but you get the idea. The idea is to organize your cable into one place, all from coming in your walls, and all bring it into this patch panel, so you can easily use factory-made, factory-pre-terminated patch cords to finish your connection to your switch. On the other end of this, you're going to have a keystone jack mounted on a wall plate in some remote wall, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to plug in a patch cord and then plug it into some device. And that's called a channel. And the, in the, uh, the keystone to keystone or patch panel to keystone uh, portion of that is called the permanent link. That's the permanent part of the connection that, that should never change. It's a permanent part of your structure. So hopefully, you found this pretty useful, and we do have an extension accessory for this particular patch panel for residential setups or small business that don't have a formal bonding infrastructure. Let's say, for example, you can't bond your rack to ground somehow directly, or you don't have a copper bus bar, like we don't have one here, for example. How are you supposed to bond your cable shields to ground? Because without that, if you don't bond this, this patch panel properly, your cable shields, you might as well not even be using shielded cable. In fact, you could actually cause yourself problems in extreme circumstances. So we have an accessory called True Plug, which we're going to get into in another video, which is really going to show you how to get around that problem. It's very unique, so you stick around and come back for that one. With that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking.